Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, in the last class, we have seen that uh, uh, how we can using the using the conservation equations of uh, mass, momentum, and energy, we can connect the downstream that is a bond state uh, of the gas uh, 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 with respect to the unbound state that is upstream state of the gas. Whereas, uh, with the reference, with we are defining upstream and downstream with reference to the chemical wave, which separates the upstream and the downstream states. Okay, and we are talking about essentially uh, premixed combustion, and we have stairs found that there are can be uh, two states uh, in which this uh, chemical uh, wave can propagate, and uh, one is the state in which it propagates at a subsonic speed, and another is a state state at which it propagates into a supersonic speed, and when it propagates at a supersonic speed, we call it a detonation, and we have pressure rise, density rise across the wave, and when it propagates at a subsonic state, we have pressure drop, density drop across the wave. So, uh, for all practical purposes, uh, all um, modern engines use uh, deflagration mm -hmm, or flames, are there non premix flame or premix flames? Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, we have not used detonation as such, except there are some developments like a pulse detonation engine or a, or a rotating detonation engines, but these are very much under development and that has not been um, practically realized yet. But there is still a lot of interest in the topic because it allows you to increase the pressure downstream of the wave, whereas mm -hmm. across a deflagration, you have a pressure drop and that leads to the loss of efficiency for a combustion. Uh, engine. Okay, in the whole thermodynamic cycle, you do some efficiency for that. So uh, now we talk about the deflagration wave, and uh, that is essentially a laminar premix flame. So we have seen that in the hydrodynamic, we can have a very, uh, very uh, uh, different descriptions or, or descriptions of the premix flame at different levels. Okay. So, uh, we can um, uh, look into hydrodynamic level or the rankin hugonio level where essentially we have seen uh, we, we consider essentially the whole flame uh, the whole structure to be a sheet where we do not really resolve the structure of the sheet what happens inside the flame or how does the chemical reactions happen we do not care. We are only happy with the uniform upstream and downstream states uh, where we have seen that this is our flame okay, and uh, uh, this is our flame and this is the downstream state and this is the upstream state and uh, so we have upstream we have have yu that is a mass fraction uh, of the fuel unbound and this is the mass fraction of the fuel bound which is equal to 0 and this uh, of course if it is a stationary wave uh, that is if the wave is not propagating uh, with respect to our coordinate system then of course it invariably implies that there is a flow into the wave which is uh, that is unbound reactants are flowing into the wave at a, pro at a velocity of u u 0 or is it, which is equal to the su 0 or the burning speed or the burning velocity of the flame speed of the um, of this uh, flame. So, uh, this is the flame sheet limit. Okay. So, it means that, uh, that we are viewing the flame for a very, very far distance where you are not really looking into what happens inside this sheet. But then if you zoom in, if you, if you put a magnifying glass and zoom into this sheet okay, and what you see what happens is that, that that sheet essentially has a finite thickness. It has a diffusion zone or a preheat zone where the temperature actually increases. So, if this is unbound gas temperature, this is a bound gas temperature. So, there is a region where the temperature sharply increases and uh, this diffusion diffusion zone is characterized by this uh, this thing uh, which is uh, uh, this LD0 okay? and uh, uh, the reaction zone is uh, essentially frozen due to large temperature Ta and uh, we again consider this reaction sheet limit uh, where the where essentially your uh, because the reaction zones are uh, happen in a very very small distance because of the large activation energy that we have already seen. But there is also a mass diffusion zone where this uh, uh, species um, uh, does not change abruptly which is not possible in reality because uh, everything has to change in a gradual manner. It only depends in a perception of length scale. So, when you zoom into this react in this flame sheet you see this we see this uh, th uh, th uh, preheat zone and the diffusion zone but you still your uh, we our our uh, magnifying our our zooming capacity is not enough to look into the reaction sheet but if you zoom in further okay you will see that there is also a reaction sheet which is also happens over a small and a finite distance or a finite length so uh, this additional uh, uh, this uh, additional reaction zone this uh, this lr which is uh, this this thickness uh, that is uh, the temperature increases like this 
okay, the uh, so species decreases like this and this is the reaction where the reaction is peaking and that happens over, over a little length of LR0 and LR0 is because it is a standard conditions we are considering and this is the LD0. Okay. So, this is the flame structure, the 1D flame structure in the x direction. Of course, in a gas turbine engine you can have a flame like this, uh, that is these are the say the swirlers, you can have a flame uh, like this uh, in a in a in a actual gas turbine combustor. Mm, uh, so, basically then in that if you this is our x, so or, or, or this is our x direction. So, here what we will see that whatever happens here in this thing is essentially is, is happens like this. So, the temperature increases like this, the the, the species decreases like this. So, uh, this, this uh, we need to understand this flame structure to essentially know what happens actually in a uh, how the how the uh, how uh, the flame structure in an actual engine uh, behaves. So, this idealized version is very very important, but once again uh, to understand that the, this this thing is essentially an element this this flame structure that we see here is can be considered as a building block or an element of the of the uh, of the complicated flame structure that happens in a actual engine just like the chambered flame is actually a element of the of the complicated flame structure that can happen in some other uh, non premix combustors so this type of understanding is very very important Okay. But now itself even going into the details we can now understand that because the activation energy is very large your LR0 must be very very larger than T uh, than uh, LD0. So, this is uh, this is one important thing. So, uh, another thing is that system is of course, conservative and your uh, your uh, uh, F that is the burning flux or the mass flux rho u is equal to your rho u u0. Uh, that is the upstream velocity and the rho b0 uh, ub0 the a 0 comes because it is the reference conditions this is also the reference conditions this is the plan and the laminar flame speed in this u u0 that we will see mm, because if the if in a in a state in the uh, uh, in the we are attached it is just coordinate transformation so in the mm, in our in a if our uh, if our flame uh, is steady with respect to our coordinate uh, system uh, then it means that the flow is coming the where the burnt mixture is uh, the uh, the unburnt mixture is approaching it at a velocity u0 whereas if the unburned mixture was uh, our reference flame was attached to the unburned mixture that is the unburned mixture was fixed then of course the flame would have propagated into the unburned mixture with the same velocity u0 but then we will call it sl0 so essentially u0 uh, is equal to s u0 uh, uh, this unburned gas um, uh, thing uh, unburned uh, uh, unburned flame speed that we see and another thing is that this is very important this comes from the energy conservation your C p t b 0 minus T u 0 is equal to Q c times Y u okay. that is this is the mass fraction and this uh, if we just integrate across you will get this and um, this gives you the flame what the flame temperature would be this is essentially the adiabatic flame temperature for the stoichiometric not for the stoichiometric but for the equivalence ratio of the mixture that is being considered. So, then we need to just understand the difference between uh, the temperatures for the non premix flame and the premix flame. So, if you consider the non premix flames say here we in this thing we will on the left hand side we will consider a non mm, non premix flame and here we will consider a Premix flame. So, the non premix flame was like this on this in a 1D both are 1D variations. So, this is 0, this is L, this is x. So, the flame was uh, somewhere here. So, this was your temperature T0, TL, this was YF0. This is just the previous thing that we did nothing can survive no fuel this is the fuel mass fraction on the left hand side because it can consider cons contains some inert nitrogen also and no fuel can survive beyond the flame this is the flame location xf and this was your yol mass fraction of the oxidizer on the l on the right hand side and these things were linear because it was just diffusion controlled okay and we saw that this is just by coupling function this becomes the solution of the Laplace equation del 2 beta i del x square is equal to 0. And the temperature formula that we obtained was this.
Okay. And uh, so what happened was that so this was the heat release, and so by and this is a fuel mass fraction. So if we consider one kg of fuel uh, mixture, okay. So this was the amount of heat release. So this one kg of fuel mixture was used for heating up. Uh, 1 kg of uh, this one the heat release from this 1 kg of the fuel mixture which contains y of 0 kg of fuel was used for heating up you know, 1 kg of fuel mixture and uh, this we found was the, the exactly the stoichiometric amount of oxidizer exactly the amount of oxidizer required for stoichiometrically burning the 1 kg fuel mixture or y of 0 kg of fuel mixture this was the thing right. So, this is what we had uh, obtained uh, 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 exactly uh, in the previous um, uh, in the previous class. So, as a result of this, this T f what we obtained was the adiabatic stoichiometric uh, adiabatic flame temperature for this for the system. Okay. So, now um, if you say that y f 0 is equal to 1. So, just to sh show you back this is uh, how we uh, obtain this um, if we just go back to the previous class in module 6 this was the thing that we obtained. So, this was the equa temperature equation uh, uh, that we had um, uh, okay. and then when, when we uh, then when we substituted uh, the uh, substituted this thing into the x f. Uh, that is here that is the x f value that we obtained here and then we this is the the temperature value that we the temperature formula that we that we got ok. So, and this this thing was the uh, exactly the amount of uh, 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 amount of uh, uh, um, uh, this, uh, this is exactly the amount of uh, the air this is uh, we can be obtained in this manner that is um, I will just uh, go little bit briefly over this because this was so important that is. Uh, uh, 1 1 kg of fuel air mixture contains uh, fuel mixture contains y f 0 kg of fuel right. Now, for stoichiometric burning the whereas this sigma 0 was nothing but w 0 times nu 0 double dash minus nu 0 dashed divided by w f times nu f double dashed minus nu f dashed. So, uh, for stoichiometric burning w 0 1 kg uh, for stoichiometric burning 1 kg or stoichiometric burning sorry this is uh, w f times nu f double dash minus nu f dash kg of fuel needs this w 0 times nu 0 double dash minus nu 0 double dash oxidizer oxygen right. So, y f 0 kg of fuel needs w 0 times nu 0 double dash minus nu 0 dash divided by w f times nu f double dash minus nu f dash kg of oxygen times w 0 f 0 right. So, this is nothing but so for stoichiometric burning y f 0 kg of fuel needed sigma 0 times y f 0 kg of oxygen right. But 1 kg of air or oxidizer mixture mix contains y 0 l kg of oxygen ok. So, sigma 0 times y f 0 kg of O 2 can be found in sigma 0 times 
sigma 0 y f 0 divided by y o l kg of oxygen mixture all right so as a result so as a result this thing was exactly the amount of oxidizer mixture that is air required for stoichiometric burning so this you see the thing is that if you just remove all these things the thing which which comes out is that this heat release okay this heat release goes on to support into heating up 1 kg of fuel mixture and exactly the amount of oxidizer mixture required for stoichiometric burning of this fuel mixture so the burning that is happening is stoichiometric okay so when the burning that is happening is stoichiometric then the flame temperature reached is nothing but the adiabatic flame temperature so here the most common situation is that the fuel does not contain nitrogen say it is pure fuel so here this qc is equal to then it means your yf0 is equal to 1 if it is pure fuel that is there is no oxidizer but of course the air will contain some nitrogen so then it means is essentially qc is equal to tf minus t0 plus sigma 0 by y o l times t f minus t l right so this temperature thus obtained is the phi equal to 1 adiabatic flame temperature okay it's always at the peak this flame temperature on the other hand if you consider the premix flame that is this structure this is your flame sheet this was also your flame sheet where your xf here is so here your fuel and oxygen mixture are premixed right and this your fuel mixture is yu 1 minus yu is equal to your uh, essentially your oxid air mixture or is oxidizer mixture like this okay and your species is reducing like this here is your flame sheet okay thin okay so here the temperature thus reached is cp times tf minus tu or we'll say call it tb minus tu is equal to qc yu okay now you see here on this side your yf0 you could set it to 1 whenever there is no nitrogen in the it, on the in the fuel which is the most likely the case right so then the fuel mass reduction is equal to 1 it's pure fuel that is going on so when you pure fuel there the flame temperature is the phi equal to 1 adiabatic flame temperature but this yu here you see it can never be equal to 1 the reason the reason is that 1 minus yu is equal to your mass fraction of the oxidizer or the air why you can never be one because this is mixed with the oxidizer okay so it's always less than one as a result this temperature is still the adiabatic flame temperature because there is no heat loss okay but this is the adiabatic flame temperature at a given phi which is a function of your yu okay so depending on the stoichiometric depending on the on the equivalence ratio now you can essentially control your tb or tb0 so that is the difference here the difference is that here you cannot control tf tf is always the stoichiometric adiabatic flame temperature as long as it is a pure fuel okay on the other hand here just by changing the stoichiometry if you just put in less fuel or uh, and more air you can control the flame temperature so that is why premix films are very attractive in any engineering things it allows you to engineer the flow inside or the it allows you to engineer the product composition and the product temperature also the also the composition because you see the temperature is uh, uh, is very very important you have seen that when you consider this uh, uh, thermal nox production of the zeldovich mechanism the the uh, this uh, n2 could be split up only at very high temperature right so for 
or, or vice versa whenever there is high to high, uh, high temperature this N2 can be split up by an oxygen right. So, you always want to reduce emissions unless there is other some other pressing needs you always want to, to combustion to happen at a temperature about 500 uh, about 1600 1700 uh, Kelvin. So, that you can do readily with this uh, um, uh, premix flame ok where you just control the equivalence ratio and then you give the get the low temperature. Of course, there are things associated with it like that is where the challenge comes like flame stability, thermoacoustic oscillations that we have to deal. But here unlike in a non premix flame where you cannot control the temp adiabatic flame, you can't control the flame temperature as long as your fuel is uh, pure. Uh, here because it is mixed with the air, you give in less fuel, you get, um, you get uh, less temperature. You can appropriately control the flame temperature and it, uh, it uh, and it can also control the um, things like emissions, etc. So that is the advantage. So then we go into the flame characteristics. That is, uh, uh, that is uh, how much uh, uh, one very important uh, characteristics to note is that if you uh, if you were considering this. Uh, So, if we were considering the premix flame structure, where the reaction zone was like this, this is your temperature T p 0, this is your T u, this is your L r and this is your L d, L r 0, L d 0. So, if you want to find out what is the relation between L d 0 and L r 0, uh, we can uh, we want to find out uh, this thing L d 0 by L r 0. Okay. So, then we have to find out basically L r 0 what what it is it what is it L r 0 is uh, or, or we go into this uh, simpler description that is uh, in the flame uh, sheet limit um, that is uh, this description where we consider there is a finite thickness, but we do not resolve the structure. So, this is your basically then your is L d 0 this is your L r 0. So, then uh, by similarity uh, of the triangles here, we can say that this is your T b 0 and this is your T x f minus that is just and this is basically your reaction zone ok. And so, this is your T x f minus x f minus is just prior to the flame ok and uh, this is your say 0 and uh, so, um, you see this is the temperature that we are talking about. So, the temperature reaches after combustion reaches the one gas uh, flame temperature which is the adiabatic flame temperature at that given equivalence ratio and uh, this there is a small thickness which is the reaction zone thickness L r 0 and just before the reaction zone thickness the temperature is slightly smaller than T b 0. So, we need to find out to find out what is the ratio of this L r 0 by L d 0 that is the reaction zone thickness to the to the diffusion zone thickness or the preheat zone thickness. We need to find out what is the to, uh, we will apply the similarity of triangles that we what we will do is that um, we will do uh, something like a T b 0 minus T x f minus divided by L r 0 that is this difference by this ratio is essentially equal to uh, T b 0 minus T u the T u is here T u uh, divided by L d 0. Okay. Even though this considers a little bit of uh, the diffusion zone strictly speaking the diffusion zone is here, but since L r 0 is smaller than L d 0 this equation holds. So, for that we need to find out this thing that is T b 0 minus T x f. So, how do you find that out? We find that out by saying that T b minus T x f is essentially um, proportional to W divided by uh, d w d t at T b 0 and that is given by whereas, if uh, uh, if we say that uh, this W is proportional to of course, there are other things also that is W is proportional to e to the power of minus T a by T. Uh, we consider that uh, we will say that uh, uh, we just uh, take this uh, derivatives and it find that it is essentially becomes ratio of T b square divided by T a ok. So, uh, whereas T b square is a burn gas flame temperature and T a is the activation, activation temperature. So, we can just uh, find this out and then we apply this thing that is L r 0 by L d 0 is essentially delta T across the reaction zone divided by delta T T b minus T u and then this uh, we substitute this here. Um, substitute this here and we get L r 0 by L d 0 is essentially equal to T b 0 square divided by T b 0 minus T u by times T a. Whereas, this thing is a very important quantity.
and that is called the Zeldovich number. Okay, so this guy is called the Zeldovich number and it is a very very important quantity and the Zeldovich number is always very large. You see that in the bottom you have a very large quantity which is TB0 square on the uh, on the uh, upstairs there is on the numerator you have TB0 minus TU which is proportional to TB0 but since TA is much much larger than TB0 you see activation temperature is much larger than TB0 that is a bond gas flame temperature which comes from the kinetic considerations that why your activation number should be large because that is the only a small fraction of uh, the molecule should be excited uh, to start the reaction okay. So, this uh, TA is very very large and they should have a very large energy and um, as a result of that the Zeldovich number is very very large. Okay, uh, as well as the inverse of uh, this is much much greater than one, whereas one by Zeldovich number uh, should be uh, much much less than one. So essentially, we see that LR zero by LD zero, which is equal to one by Zeldovich number, that should be much much smaller than one. So this is the deal. This is the consideration that L LR zero by LD zero should be much smaller than one. Now uh, we can go into balance the, of the diffusion and the uh, and the, con and the convection and the diffusion flux balance in the preheat zone. Of course, you see that in this structure, that uh, in this zone, in this zone of LD zero, there is no reaction. This W equal to zero, or in this part, that is in this region. Uh, this is how the temperature increases. Okay, so in this region. Uh, we can consider the your reaction rate, the species independent reaction rate or the species production rate that is equal to 0. Okay. So, that is equal to 0 and as it is uh, if that is so then essentially your just this is just like the the, the, uh, the previous uh, 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 relations that we used uh, while deriving the coupling functions that even the flame uh, flame essentially means reactions, but because the Zeldovich number is very high because the not the Zeldovich number yeah uh, because the Arrhenius number is uh, or the or the t activation temperature is very high as a consequence of that your Zeldovich number is very large and as a result your reaction zone thickness that is the LR0 where the reaction happens it is much much smaller than your preheat zone thickness. So, uh, in lot of the flame actually there is no uh, under this assumption there is no reaction happening it is only balance between diffusion and convection. So, if there is balance between diffusion and convection uh, we can just uh, consider this equation that is um, uh, say anything uh, we consider the temperature equation the one dimensional temperature equation which is F 0 times uh, um, C p d t d x minus lambda d 2 t d x square is equal to 0 right. So, then it means that uh, then if we do an order of magnitude analysis we say that this is represented by F0 Cp where this happens is essentially delta T uh, which is second equal to Tb minus Tu divided by Ld0 that is the diffusion length and that should be proportional to uh, or have the same order of magnitude as lambda times delta T divided by Ld0 square. Okay, then this this cancels and your Ld0 is nothing but lambda by Cp times 1 by F0 okay. uh, or, or your F0 is nothing but uh, lambda by C p times 1 by L d 0. Okay. So, this is a very very important relation you see or you see that or we say that L f 0 times L d 0 is essentially proportional to lambda by C p which is your uh, thermal diffusivity divided with the specific heat. or of course, f 0 is essentially equal to your rho u times S l or you can also write that S l 0 times L d 0 or S u 0. Mm, uh, times L d 0 is proportional to equal lambda by rho C p essentially is equal to thermal diffusivity. So, S u times L d 0 is equal to constant is equal to thermal diffusivity and that arrives just from the fact that in the preheat zone it is just a balance between your, um, your convection and diffusion and then there is no reaction at that place. Okay. So, that is the consideration that uh, uh, so uh, kind of with that we can arrive at this. Now, of course, uh, we have to uh, whatever flux goes in whatever F 0 goes in through the through this uh, convection diffusive convective diffusive zone mm, that must also be reacted. Okay. So, uh, if you remember the dimensions um, of, 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 uh, of, the, uh, of the reaction rate and then we can also relate your F 0 essentially to uh, this thing that is the 
W is 0 the species production rate at the burnt gas temperature times L R 0. So, that is how you basically dimensionally you connect with the F 0 with the reaction rate. So, the, re the assumption is that the reaction mass flux entering through the flame that is Y 0 times F u okay, which is equal to the reaction flux through the reaction zone which is Y 0 times W B 0 because that is a, there is a species uh, consumption rate times L R 0. So, if when you equate these two things that is Y u times F u 0 is equal to Y u times W B 0 times uh, L R 0 you this this cancels and your F u 0 is nothing but W B 0 times L R 0. Okay. So, now uh, of course, uh, what you can do is that uh, uh, you can relate uh, uh, you can relate this guy with this guy. Okay. The, the what you can do is that you can just multiply these two things and you will get F 0 squared is equal to lambda by C p times W b 0 that is the reaction or the species production consumption rate at the burnt gas temperature times L r 0 by L d 0. This is a beautiful relationship uh, that is emerges and by very very simple considerations just by considering the, um, the species flux just by assuming that the species flux that travels to the preheat zone that is a convective diffusive zone is also has to be consumed in the reaction zone. So, from that thing it this emerges this relationship emerges and you see what it is um, this is nothing but lambda by C p that is the thermal diffusivity of without the density times W 0 and this is what L R 0 by L D 0 is nothing but 1 by Zeldovich number. Okay. So, then this thing emerges that your F 0 square is uh, that is a burn bar, that is a, a bar, uh, the flux the burning flux um, uh, uh, squared is essentially lambda by C p times W B 0 that is Z is a Zeldovich number or your you can write it like this your F 0 is essentially uh, square root of lambda by C p times W B 0 and by times end of which number to the power of 1 half. Okay. So, the here you get plenty of information about previous flames okay. and also you can of course, find out the L D 0 is equal to lambda by C P times W B 0 times end of which number. But this thing is as I said that the burning flux or the burning velocity is the most important property of a premix flame and from this very simple consideration itself you can get a plenty information. One has to always remember this that is F 0 square F 0 is essentially equal to square root of lambda by C p times W b 0 times delta which number that is the thing which means that you see it this F 0 is essentially the geometric mean of lambda by C p and W b 0. So, it means that in a premix flame your lambda by C p and W b 0 both are equally important. Okay, both diffusion and reaction are very very important and that is why right, the premix flame is much more sensitive to chemical reaction mechanisms and everything. Whereas, in a diffusion flame which is basically a diffusion control as such you have seen that your F 0 is essentially proportional to lambda by C p. Okay, in a non premix flame uh, your F 0 or F uh, in a chamber flame you have seen that it was proportional to lambda by C p times the, the, the velocity the, the species gradient etcetera. But here it has this has odd to the power of 1 here it is to the power of half. So, of course, here the diffuse diffusion importance of diffusion has gone down at the at the cost of chemical reactions. Okay. But this thing has to be always remembered this this is the first order calculation a very basic calculation which yields this thing and this analysis, but it is very very important. We will go into more sophisticated analysis later to arrive at this again, uh, but this itself uh, gives a lot of information. It says that F 0 square that is a burning flux square burning flux is essentially proportional to is proportional to the square root of the thermal diffusivity without the density and and is also proportional to the square root of uh, the reaction rate at the at burn gas temperature and also proportional inversely proportional to the zelda which number to the power of half. So, all these things is a very very important information and which is now this F 0 is now used to close actually the rankin hukuni relation where you see M u M u was not specified. So, this essentially this result shows three fundamental quantities governing the flame response lambda by C p is a measure of diffusion W b 0 is a measure of reaction and zelda which number is a measure of activation because zelda which number you see what it was is essentially T a times T b minus T u divided by T b uh, 0 squared. Okay. So, this is a measure of essentially the activation energy and the exothermicity T b 0. 
So, this, these three things uh, shows how the premix flame actually responds. And as such, the response of premix flames is more uh, uh, more rich in terms of response rather than a non premix flame because of these things. So, as we have seen that you hear your uh, non premix flame, uh, the burning flux of the was uh, proportional to lambda by Cp, which says it was diffusion dominating, pre only diffusion, and here your premix flame, your F0 is equal to lambda by Cp to the power of half, and where because uh, your reaction is also equally important, it is also proportional to the power of half. Okay. So, as, as a result uh, what you have seen is that F0 is essentially pro proportional to square root of our uh, lambda by Cp times W0 or the propagation rate is a response of the flame which is the geometric average of the diffusion and reaction rates which are the driving forces in the forming the flame. And uh, here of course, we can say that uh, F0 times LD0 is equal to F lambda by Cp which depends only on transport whereas F0 by LD0 is equal to W by 0 times Seldovich which number which depends only on reaction. Okay. So, to end this, uh, this, uh, this thing uh, discussion that is the uh, flame uh, characteristics as, as we have seen that uh, there are only two controlling processes that is diffusion and reactions and the flame uh, characteristics are described by independent relations which can be expressed in three different ways to convey different messages. So, um, if we just consider the balance of the processes that is the, uh, that is the balance of the, uh, of the convective and the diffusive um, uh, terms uh, or the convective and the diffusive fluxes you obtain this F0 is equal to lambda by Cp uh, divided by Ld0. Whatever is flowing this, this flux has to be consumed uh, uh, if, the, uh, if there is complete combustion and of course, which is the case and uh, F0 is essentially Wb0 times Lr0, Lr is the reaction, uh, reaction zone thickness. And then we can combine these two to find out explicit relation for the responses whereas F0 square is equal to uh, uh, lambda by Cp times Wb0 times by Zeldovich number and this Ld0 uh, square is essentially lambda by Cp divided by Wb0 times Zeldovich number. And uh, when we do the explicit relationships we can find this sort of things by considering only the uh, con only the diffusive thing uh, diffusive uh, properties of the reactive properties F0 times Ld0 is only dependent on diffusion whereas F0 by Ld0 is only dependent on reaction. So, uh, then the thing comes that how does your F0 or SL depend on pressure. Now, we know that your Wb0 because it is a law of mass action where any uh, by because uh, Wb0 is essentially given governed by law of mass action that is uh, the, the reaction rate should be proportional to the product of the of the concentrations of the um, uh, raised to the power stoichi to the raised to the to the power of the stoichiometric exponents. And we can also alternatively write it as uh, this concentration uh, is the essentially proportional to the pressure. So, we can write it as uh, Wb0 is essentially to the power is proportional to P to the power of n where n is the reaction order. Okay. Now, we have already known that F0 is equal to lambda by Cp times Wb0 to the power of half whereas Wb0 is essentially P to the power of n. So, this gives you a P to the power of n by 2 dependence. So, F0 is essentially P to the power of n by 2. Now, SU0 which is the burning speed or the, or the flame speed or the burning velocity uh, SU0 is proportional to is essentially this rho u times SU0 is, is equal to F0 that is a flux. So, this is equal to this. So, it essentially becomes once again P is equal to rho RT. So, your P rho u is essentially proportional to pressure that is upstream density where the there is no temperature variation that is we can do this. We say F0 by P. So, then this also gives you a so, this part gives you a p to the power of n, n by 2 dependence and this part gives you a p to the power of n minus 1 dependence. So, this you give p to the power of n by 2 minus 1 dependence. Okay. And then of course, your since Ld0 and F0 are connected, we can connect these two also and that gives you a p to the power of n minus uh, n by 2 dependence. So, you see that burning flux always increases with pressure as long as n is positive which is the case. So, burning flux always increases with pressure. But you see that there is in the burning flux you also have density built into it. Okay, so uh, it also increases because uh, you have lot of uh, because your gas is more dense. Uh, uh, so it's more mass is consumed, more mass flux is consumed. That is why it's dependent on pressure. When you take off the dependence, when you take off the density, this burning flux has a n by two minus one. So whenever n is only greater than uh, greater than two, then it becomes uh, when n is equal to two, it becomes pressure insensitive. And if uh, in other cases when n is equal to one, then it actually decreases with pressure. As you will see later that SU actually actually decreases with pressure whereas F0 is actually increases with pressure. Whereas the flame thickness that is Ld0 that has a clear negative dependence because omega b appears in the uh, denominator in this case. So, in that case we see that P n by P is actually. So, uh, F0 is uh, with uh, goes up with pressure this can go up or most but mostly goes down with pressure 
whereas this definitely goes down with pressure okay ld0 there is a flame thickness goes around with pressure so higher the pressure is that the flame thickness becomes smaller so this gives you an idea about the challenge in computations also because you see uh, gas turbine engines or other engines edo engines operate at high pressure because uh, we when only we add heat at high pressure you can get um, work done right so now um, of course at high pressure you see that your ld0 reduces with pressure so if you do want to do a high pressure simulation your flame thickness becomes very small Okay, so, you need more and more grid points or if you are an experimentalist doing optical diagnostics, you need more and more camera resolution to basically image the flame thickness or solve for the flame thickness. So, this gives you a very uh, challenging task to model flames at high pressure. So, as we have seen that implications we have already discussed that for n equal to 2 f is not a function of pressure and uh, this is a cancellation between density and reaction, but this is not a fundamental result. Okay, for n equal to between 0 and 2 f increases with pressure, but s u decreases with pressure which is mostly the case and um, whereas L dependence of L d on pressure is through reaction, but not through diffusion as a result of that because lambda by C p does not depend on pressure. Mm, okay, so, uh, as a result of this uh, uh, your L d 0 invariably decreases with pressure. So, uh, uh, with that uh, we will uh, uh, end this class and then we will go into analysis of the uh, governing equations to derive the flame speed in a more rigorous manner here it was done in a more phenomenologically. Now, you can ask that why should you do it in a more rigorous manner because then when you do things in a rigorous way in a mathematically uh, uh, detailed manner then all the properties of the flames also becomes much more clearer and it will tell you also whether this, um, whether this analysis that we have done whether that is correct or not and um, uh, but to gain more understanding one needs to do, uh, do a detailed rigorous analysis which we will do in next class uh, using the Frank-Kaminetsky analysis. For that until then uh, thank you very much and uh, see you in next class.